Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for Parkinson's disease. So what is Parkinson's disease? I'm going to refer to it as PD. Um, it's a progressive neurodegenerative disorder characterized by a focal degeneration of midbrain dopamine neurons. When you have less dopamine neurons, you have less dopamine. And there's one area of the brain, it's the midbrain, called substantia nigra pars compacta. I know that's a mouthful, but it's in the midbrain. And what happens is a movement disorder results, which has bradykinesia, uh, resting tremor, muscle rigidity. And for anyone who's really interested, here's the area of the brain. You can see where this arrow goes. That is the substantia nigra. That's the area that loses the neurons that produce dopamine. How common is it? Well, Parkinson's disease is the second most prevalent neurodegenerative disease, uh, far behind Alzheimer's. The prevalence over at the age of 65 is 2% worldwide. Uh, it doesn't just affect, you know, people in a certain area of the world. And it does affect 50% more men than women. How's it diagnosed? Uh, there, there really is no specific test. Um, your doctor, uh, a neurologist, will diagnose Parkinson's disease typically based on your medical history, reviewing your signs and symptoms, and ruling out other issues. One of the interesting things is that an initial treatment may actually help with the diagnosis. If a patient is given uh, Cinemet, um, you have a sufficient dose, and if it relieves a lot of the symptoms, then the doctor will often say, okay, well, now that we know that that treatment works, that's the problem. Parkinson's. So symptoms um, are varying, but as the disease progresses, people often have difficulty walking, talking. They might have some sleep issues, depression, memory problems, fatigue, uh, tremor, stiffness, um, slow movement, and impaired balance and coordination. So when you look at the traditional treatments for Parkinson's disease, most um, are geared towards replacing the lost dopamine. So the medication that was developed in the 1960s, most commonly Cinemet, is a combination of levodopa and carbidopa. Carbidopa is basically just added to reduce the um, nausea and vomiting. That's the reason. Um, now, what are complications? Well, people can develop a tolerance. They can get dyskinesia, hallucinations, other psych problems, impulse control disorders. Once the medication stops working, um, deep brain stimulation may be very helpful. Now, one of the ways that levodopa works is it's a precursor to dopamine. So it can cross the blood-brain barrier. So, you know, if you give enough of it, it will go into the brain and help replace the lost dopamine. It doesn't replace the dopamine-producing neurons, okay? So it doesn't really get to the root of the problem. Um, the reason you don't, they don't give dopamine directly is because dopamine doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. Levodopa does. All right, so when you look at stem cell therapy for PD, the optimal treatment would actually be one that is neuroprotective, neuroprotect so it can save neurons from dying, and neuroregenerative, so you can create new neurons that can then produce dopamine. Initial research into the effects of stem cells on the brain shows excellent results for neurogenesis, revascularization, creating new blood flow to help support new neuron formation, anti-apoptosis, that's a fancy word for basically preventing cell death, immunomodulatory, which can help uh, stop the immune system from producing harmful cytokines and growth factors that are not helpful, in fact, detrimental. Anti-inflammatory, anytime you have a chronic medical condition, whether it's Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, any of those, inflammation is a component. This can reduce that. Um, and then given the ability to migrate and engraft at sites of inflammation, most of the effects of stem cells are exerted by what's called paracrine expression. 
So stem cells also have exosomes in them. They have neurotrophic factors, cytokines. Those are very good with cell-to-cell -cell communication. So a lot of the ways the stem cells do make the benefits is to help your body amp up its own repair processes. So here's a study, differentiation of human mesenchymal stem cells to dopamine neurons. And it was a comparison study, but basically what they showed is that both Wharton's jelly mesenchymal stem cells and stem cells from your nose um, are, are really, really good at differentiating into dopamine neurons. Um, and also, um, they noted that based on the available research, MSC-based approaches have opened a promising avenue into the treatment of patients with neurologic disorders such as PD. So this was an interesting, interesting study back in 2010. This group out of India actually implanted autologous bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stem cells intracerebral, meaning right into the brains of seven patients aged 22 to 62 years. Three of them showed a steady improvement um, in their disease rating scales. There were no adverse events in any of the patients. We don't do intracerebral um, implantation. Uh, we do intrathecal, so it's a lot safer, um, and you don't have to make drill holes or, or any of that. So um, umbilical cord and unlimited source of cells differentiable towards dopaminergic neurons. This was another study that looked at um, Parkinson's disease and cell therapy was showing the feasibility of neuron differentiation into uh, dopaminergic uh, neurons, which can be very helpful at replacing what's been lost. So in our experience, um, we usually use one to two million cells per kilogram. So it might be one to 200 million stem cells for a patient. We know that numbers matter. And if you look at clinical trials all over the world, you'll see that the outcomes are the best when patients get enough stem cells. So we've performed uh, Parkinson's disease stem cell therapy on over 50 patients. We've seen substantial improvements um, over the vast majority of them with no significant side effects. We use an intrathecal approach. You can see one of our anesthesiologists here doing an intrathecal. Um, it's very safe. Uh, patients can either sit up like this or lay down in almost like a fetal position. Um, and the anesthesiologist will um, sterilize the area and um, put in the uh, stem cells directly into the central nervous system, you know, where we want them to go. So there's a lot of small studies. Uh, our own experience shows that stem cell therapy for Parkinson's disease is not only safe, but typically very effective. There are a few key points. High stem cell numbers are necessary if you're considering going to someone who offers you know, bone marrow or something like that, it's very difficult to get the stem cell counts that you need to get the optimal outcome. Um, intrathecal is best for central ner nervous system concentrations, um, and umbilical cord gives great results. That's what we use. I do want to mention that embryonic stem cell therapy and induced pluripotent stem cell therapies are not ready for prime time. There are some research studies showing that they may have some potential benefit in humans, but they do have some safety concerns, potential rejection, potential tumors. We've never to offer those. They're not safe for use in clinical uh, patients. So we use the mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells from umbilical cord tissue. Our international treatment programs are available in Mexico, Pakistan, other countries are in the works. The process starts with a free phone consultation from one of our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors. And we also have patient concierge representatives who will be, be dedicated to you and your loved one to help with all the travel logistics, including travel from the airport to the clinic and back. We make it very easy uh, for patients and their families. So I do want to mention about the cells that we use. They do come from umbilical cord, uh, from donated from mothers in the United States. That's where our program is, the donor program. Um, the donors are screened heavily. The FDA requires that. We go above and beyond. And the tissue itself um, is screened very heavily. So it comes after a donated, I'm sorry, a scheduled C-section. 
uh, no harm to baby or mother. We have a pristine safety record in over 16,000 procedures in the last decade. Um, these are pure, potent stem cells, um, lots of growth factors, billions of exosomes, cytokines, secretomes, microRNA. Um, I refer to it as a virtual orchestra of regenerative elements. R3 has been featured on every major media channel you can think of, and the list continues to grow. We've won a lot of awards, 10 Most Innovative, 10 Best Companies, 50 Smartest. We did win the USA's Leading Regenerative Therapy Services Provider in 2020. In 2021, we won the World's Leading Regenerative Therapy Services Provider. Um, the, to get started with R3, the process is, is simple. It's a free consult. If you want to call us um, on the U.S. prefix, it's plus one, 888 0515 and visit us online today at r3stem.com. You can see our locations, a lot about each one. Each one is only 20 minutes from the airport. Thank you very much for watching.